Welcome to the Fresno County pod training module for the operations section. As a member of the operations team at the point of dispensing site, you have the central role in making the pod successful. The operations section is the largest section in the pod because it's responsible for carrying out the main pod activity of dispensing. Most operations jobs involve face-to-face -face interactions with the public. The other sections are all working to support your mission. Planning does record keeping and situational analysis using patient and ICS forms after you're done with them. Logistics provides supplies and personnel and finance keeps an audit trail and collects receipts and injury and damage reports. For purposes of the anthrax scenario, your mission is to dispense oral medications, that is pills, to an entire community within 48 hours. This is a time critical emergency, so speed is essential. Remember rule number one in a time critical event is speed equals survival. This is why we practice for anthrax. Other medical countermeasure scenarios, like pandemic influenza, may require vaccine injections or nasal sprays, but may not be as time critical. However, in all cases, remember to keep the line moving. Although your primary mission is dispensing, the public may feel their primary mission is getting information. As a point of contact with the public, you will be the focus of many questions. There will be a massive public information campaign to assist you, but you should remember that the public is looking at you as a role model. If you display calmness and understanding in the emergency, the public will reflect it. Be prepared to address the most obvious concerns. For instance, the public may question why rush prophylaxis. They might worry about the risks, and they might wonder about effects on pregnancy. Limit your information to what's found on the fact sheets. And remember, only PIO or designee with EOC clearance should communicate with the media. As part of the emergency response team, you'll be the first to receive prophylaxis. Once a pod is set up, its first mission is to prophylax the pod staff, including you. The dispensing group will take their medication. Then they'll dispense medications to the rest of the pod staff. This allows the staff to give the pod process a dry run. The pod has two basic flow tracks, the express track and the special considerations track, or more simply, the help desk. Most people will go through the express track and receive medications normally. The special considerations track is only for the small percentage whose health would be threatened without special medical attention or communication. In short, if they cannot communicate or cannot walk the length of the pod, then they should be directed to the help desk. Both special considerations and the express track have the same basic dispensing model. Not all people in wheelchairs are special cases. And just because someone speaks another language doesn't mean that they require translation services. Most clients will have a functional understanding of English that can be supplemented by printed material in their native language. The dispensing process is meant to be fast and simple. Fill out a form, review it for allergies or complications, pick up medication, and turn in your form with name and medication listed together before exiting. Pod operations can be divided many ways. There are clinical and non-clinical roles. There are express and special considerations or help desk roles. And there are station staff and roving staff. Let's first review the operations roles for the express track, which will process 95% of clients. First, there's the fill out forms area. When the public arrives at a pod, this is the area where they become our clients and first come into contact with pod staff. It extends from the front door all the way into the parking lot. The fill out forms area is comprised of several stages. Arrival, 
where the line starts and where greeter number one is stationed. Pick up forms, fill out forms, and stand by for review. Staff for the fill out forms area includes the greeter and check-in staff. Greeters, also known in some pod plans as triage, griage, or sorters, are the first contact with the public. Their mission is to form clients into a manageable line, calm and reassure those with concerns, and be on the lookout for severely ill or infirmed. This may involve walking up and down the line asking questions. Is anyone feeling ill? Was anyone at the contamination site? Or in direct contact with someone who was? If you encounter someone who's sick outside the pod, Quickly separate them from the rest of the crowd. Don't send them into the pod, but get them to an outside medical team who will take care of treatment and transport if necessary. You may encounter clients who need special assistance. Monitor the line for those who need special considerations and direct them to the help desk. You might also remind clients that cell phone use should be limited to emergency communications only. Don't overload the cell towers. Because the public sees greeters as the first professional face at the pod, your demeanor can have a big impact. People may have a lot of questions. If there's time, calmly answer their questions, but only if you're certain you know the answer and it will contribute to the flow. One technique is to keep moving yourself. If you stop to talk, the line stops to listen. Try to refer any general questions to printed material and signs, to media resources, or to call center providers. If questions are more specific or medical, refer clients to their own healthcare providers. Roving staff can be found anywhere in the pod, including the entrance, and may be able to assist you. They include interpreters, mental health workers, chaplains, and runners. After the greeters, clients move into the care of check-in staff. As part of the flow control team, the check-in staff are responsible for making sure that the pod gets a steady stream of form-ready clients. They sort clients into the express track or the special considerations track. In large pods, Clients will have to fill forms out while standing. Forms should be preset on clipboards with plenty of spare pencils. Patient information forms will vary depending on the incident. For anthrax, one person can pick up medication for others. In contrast, for an injectable vaccine pod, only those who show up in person can receive treatment. The patient information form for anthrax is a sorting tool formatted to quickly separate yes from no answers, and it's divided into two steps. Step one sorts allergies to doxycycline, the most likely primary medicine, and identifies children and pregnant women. If there is a yes answer in step one for anyone, clients need to answer the questions in step two. As a flow controller, your job is to make sure that clients answer the questions. Don't diagnose them. The most you should offer, if the clinical group leader and pod site manager approve, is simple clarification that tizanidine is a type of muscle relaxant. If clients are unsure about the answers to a particular question, you might suggest that they make a cell phone call to clarify. Success for the fill out forms team means that the standby area at the entry to the next station is always packed with clients holding completed forms. The next area is the screeners. As a screener, you stand at the crossroads of the pod. Your mission is to sort clients into express track or medical screening. Any question involving medical evaluation that cannot be answered by trained staff should be taken off the express track and referred to medical screening. Remember, the vast majority of clients should go through the express track. Often, the screening area 
becomes the rate limiting step in pod operations. This means that the line backs up at the screening area and the speed of the pod becomes dictated by this station. Try not to let this happen. The best pods operate with the dispensing station as the rate limiting step, with the primary mission, dispensing, dictating the speed. Each incident will require a customized form. As a reviewer, you'll get a briefing and an instruction sheet for each new form. If the answer to all of the questions in step one is no, then the client should be directed to the dispensing station. If a client has a yes answer in step one, then look at step two. If the client answers no to all of the questions in step two, then they are also directed to the dispensing station. But if a client has a yes answer in step one and step two, then they should be directed to medical screening for further evaluation. People may be tempted to choose yes answers unnecessarily, so quickly confirm the reason for a yes. A single confirmed yes in step two means immediate redirection to medical screening. Some pods may even have multiple language forms, so even a Spanish-only client could answer no to all of the questions and then be safely directed to the dispensing station. The next station, medical dispensing, is where the central mission of the pod occurs. The dispensing unit leader works with the dispenser and both of them are under the supervision of the clinical director. In smaller pods, these roles may be combined or switched as needed. Medicine dispensers are responsible for reviewing and marking the patient information form and handing out the medicine, as well as preparing the medicine for quicker and easier dispensing. In the anthrax pod, medicine comes in the form of pills or liquid that can be pre-bagged into different dosages, both adult and child, with child bags having oral syringes included. This makes the job of medicine dispenser easier. All you need to do is hand over the correct bags. But it also means that medicine preparers need to be accurate and working way ahead of the demand. In an injectable vaccine scenario, other pod stations work roughly the same, except dispensing. For vaccines, medicine dispensers will need to be skilled at giving shots to both adults and children. And medicine preparers will need to monitor medicine storage temperatures and may need to dose syringes from multi-dose bottles. Nasal vaccine spray is much easier. The nasal syringe is placed at the nasal opening. A firm pressure on the plunger sprays medicine into the mucous membrane area inside the nose. A clip stops the plunger at a half a dose for one nostril. Remove the clip and spray the rest of the dose into the other nostril. The vaccine works by getting into the mucous membranes, so inhaling is unnecessary and causes a bad medicine taste in the mouth. However, nasal spray isn't recommended for everyone, so some clients will still need injections. There are two primary anthrax antibiotics for oral use doxycycline, and ciprofloxacin. If clients have answered no to all of the questions in step one, then clients receive doxycycline. If clients had a yes answer in step one, but all no answers in step two, then they should receive ciprofloxacin. Medical dispensers should circle on the bottom of the form which antibiotic and what dosage is dispensed. For pediatric medications, clients may need additional instructions, such as how to prepare medicine for children. A 10cc children's oral syringe may also be given if available. To keep the express track moving fast, all those with contraindications will be directed to medical screening for medical evaluation. At medical evaluation, 
A clinical healthcare provider is available to make any necessary medical decisions. The rest of the medical evaluation staff are medical consultants with varying clinical expertise who work under the direction of the clinical group supervisor. The goal of medical evaluation is to allow every client to exit the pod with appropriate medicine in hand or with a prescription for the appropriate medicine. The clinical group supervisor should conduct a briefing and have a pod medical evaluation reference sheet from the Fresno County Department of Public Health. Clients have been referred to this station because they've answered yes to questions in both step one and step two of the patient information screening form. Your job is to finalize the selection and dose of medicine for clients who are routed to your station by the screening process. Some medical evaluation cases can be resolved with the client returning to the pickup medicine station to receive medications along with the rest of the Express Track clients. Severe allergy concerns are given prescriptions and referred to personal doctors for follow-up. If you're a medical consultant at this station and do not feel comfortable making this decision, please contact the clinical group supervisor for advice. The last station for either the express track or the special considerations track is the exit. The exit staff will ensure that all screening and dispensing forms are collected before clients leave. The station itself should be arranged so that forms can easily be collected. Forms collectors should remember that patient forms are considered confidential and must be kept secure. Once collected, patient forms still have work to do. They need to be collected by the planning section for use in monitoring pod function. Later, patient information should be computerized at a data input station. However, the written records must be maintained. Data entry of patient forms is not recommended during active time-critical pod operations. However, data entry should be performed within a few days of any medical countermeasures because disease surveillance and tracking of medications or side effects will be important. If data entry is begun at the pod site, it's recommended that you do it after its use in analysis by the planning section. Exit staff will direct people out of the building and refer questions to patient information sheets, media, call centers, or personal health care providers. Staff may also refer to signs provided near the exit that answer the most common questions. Examples of questions you might hear at Q&A include, are there special instructions for taking Doxy or Cipro? The answer, most importantly, as with all antibiotics, continue taking the medicine for the full number of days according to the schedule you were given, even if you begin to feel better. Or, what side effects are serious enough that I should go to a doctor? The answer, any side effect that forces you not to take your medicine is serious enough for you to consult or visit your doctor. As a member of the pod operations staff, you're the tip of the spear in emergency prophylaxis and medical countermeasures. Your success can be measured in lives saved. The knowledge you gained here can be adapted to many emergency situations. Even if you're not deployed in an anthrax scenario, you should be better able to integrate your skills for the benefit of others. Thank you for becoming a public health first responder. For more information, contact the Fresno County Department of Public Health Emergency Preparedness Program, fcdph.org. This video was produced in collaboration with Applied Creative Training, Inc., and made possible with the generous permission of the Alameda County Public Health Department, Office of Public Health Emergency Preparedness.